love Studio Ghibli so much. Like, I grew up with Spirited Away and Totoro and Castle in the Sky on loop. Due to the process of making this video, I kept discovering so many more amazing Miyazaki films and now I just don't know which one is my favorite anymore. If you know what yours is, um, let us know in the comments. Food shows up constantly in the Studio Ghibli movies. And it doesn't just look really good and add to the cozy and nostalgic feeling these movies give you in general. It also works as an important storytelling device. The food can bring certain characters closer together, for example. It can help us understand them better and how they're feeling. Or it can emphasize an underlying message that the film is trying to tell us. For instance, in Spirited Away, the theme of greediness and how greed is bad is being portrayed by that iconic scene where Chihiro's parents stuff themselves with food that isn't theirs and then they turn into pigs. That scene traumatized me as a child. <laughs> as always, this video is going to be free from major spoilers. Like, the pig scene happens within the first few minutes of the film, so I think that's fair game to talk about. When it comes to the recipes, I am taking some liberties here and there, adapting them to be plant-based for me. So veganizing everything was a bit of a challenge at times, but I also think I kind of killed it, so yep. <laughs> Let's get started with this first movie, shall we? Kiki's Delivery Service. I only discovered this one a few years back, but fell in love with it immediately. Kiki, who is a witch, leaves home at the ripe age of 13. She finds a job and a place to stay at this cute little bakery, which means cozy food is popping up everywhere in this film. Hey! You know, you can't be late for every meal just because you have a new girlfriend, and you can wash your plate yourself. Meow. Her breakfast here consists of fluffy looking pancakes. Fun fact, she uses Ghibli pancake mix to make these. There's also tomatoes, sausage, bread from the bakery, cheese. And I love how her mug of um, what I think contains hot chocolate has a picture of Gigi on it. First, I put some store-bought breakfast buns into the oven to finish up baking. Then I made the pancakes. First, mixing together all the wet ingredients in a large bowl. That's plain soy yogurt, applesauce, vanilla, lemon juice, and a bit of water. I'm using sparkling water here, but regular works just fine. In a small separate bowl, I quickly combined the dry ingredients, aka the flour, salt, baking powder, and powdered sugar. Then I added that to my bowl, mixing everything together quickly. To a medium-sized, non-stick skillet, I added some coconut oil, brought the heat up to medium, and then once it was hot, I added about half of the batter, shaping the pancake using a ladle. Give each pancake about four or five minutes on each side. Feel free to add a lid as well, creating some steam to help the pancake cook through quicker. I ended up cooking a few on low heat as well, because I wanted them to be a bit more light in color, so they would match the ones that Kiki made. Early on in the film, we see the bakery owner prepare hot chocolate for Kiki. She uses some sort of hot cocoa mix here. I didn't have that, sadly, and so I just went for straight up unsweetened cacao. Then I added hot water, a sugar cube or two, Plus, then I also added a bit of oat milk, just because, you know, I was working with baking cacao only. So we've got the buns from the oven here. The sausages I used were based on seitan. Oh, and I also found the most amazing vegan cheese. It is supposed to be like Parmesan, but it's not quite like Parmesan, but still super, super yummy regardless. question is whether or not adding this is, is doing too much. Is this going too far? I couldn't talk about Kiki's delivery service and then also just not 
bake one of those bakery breads as well. They looked too good. To a large mixing bowl, I'm adding some room temperature water, some hot, almost boiling water, powdered sugar, a bit of olive oil, and yeah, that's it. Then I'm sprinkling over some dry active yeast and setting that aside for 5 to 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm measuring and combining the flours, plus adding a bit of salt, some of this powdered sourdough extract. Then I mix together the wet and the dry with a spatula first until it roughly came together and then I started kneading this with my hands for a good six to eight minutes. You can also add a bit of flour to the surface, but try to add less flour than more. I recently made the purchase of one of these fancy wooden proofing baskets. This is my first time using these, um, but you're supposed to lightly flour the linen sheet that's inside there as well. And then I'm shaping my lump of dough into a nice little loaf, sort of tucking and pinching the bottom together before transferring that to the basket. I'm also adding a big plastic bag here. I saw this tip in a YouTube video somewhere. Obviously the bag can and will be reused. I preheated the oven to 180 degrees Celsius, then lined a baking sheet with parchment paper, carefully letting the loaf slide onto the baking tray. I gave it three slits here, similar to what we can see in the anime, and that's pretty much it. Let the loaf bake for 30 to 35 minutes. This bread is so yummy. I just need to bake bread more often. It's not that difficult and I always have so much flour at home anyway. And yeah, you can of course cut it into slices, keep those in the freezer. When I think about bread in Studio Ghibli films, another moment that comes to mind immediately is the breakfast scene in Howl's Moving Castle. Sophie. Ah, uh, arigato. Shokun, itadako. Umashikate wo. I never saw this film as a kid. I don't know why, because I was watching TV constantly. However, I saw it a few times since then, um, randomly also in different languages. And I just found it so interesting how much the different voices and translations can impact and sort of change up the tone and even the characters ever so slightly. Let's look at the breakfast scene again. For context, Sophie, who is secretly a young girl that was turned into an old woman by an evil witch, has claimed the position as cleaning lady in a messy wizard's house. As her first order of business, she decides to cook some bacon and eggs using calcifer, a speaking flame. Calcifer? You're being so obedient. Not on purpose. She bullied me. And you are who? Uh, you, you can just call me Grandma Sophie. I'm your new cleaning lady. I just started work today. Give that to me. Oh. Howell's English voice here sounds pretty demanding and kind of deep and mysterious. Whereas the German Howell sounds a lot more boyish and polite to me. Lass mich das machen. <sighs> Gib mir noch zwei Scheiben Speck dazu und bitte auch noch sechs Eier. Oh, another small difference I noticed was when Hal asks, who hired you? In both the original Japanese and the dubbed German version, Sophie answers more or less honestly and explains to Hal that she has hired herself to clean the house. But in the English version, she says Calcifer did, which is not true at all and makes her come across a bit more cunning, I guess, or sassy at least. Do I have a profound point to make here? No, but I thought it was interesting pointing out those differences. I love languages. 
back to the food. So here is my version of the bacon and eggs. Not only does it look a lot like anime food, it also tastes pretty accurate, I would say. My past vegan bacon recipes, they've all resulted in very, very thin and crispy bacon. Whereas the one that Sophie cooks with, it's, it's thick. And so my first instinct was to make some seitan from scratch, using the recipe for seitan steaks from my cookbook. Um, and then to cover those steaks in barbecue sauce and wrap them up in rice paper and then bake them. Don't get me wrong, that was delicious. But I needed the bacon to have more of a jiggle and to overall also be a bit less effort. So I then just cut some square shaped rice paper into strips about three to four centimeters wide and then let each strip soak in a bowl of water for like a few seconds before transferring that to a baking sheet with parchment paper. The oven was preheating to 190 degrees at the same time as well, by the way. Each layer I would then generously brush with a mixture of barbecue sauce, oil, vinegar, and mustard. Instead of one single layer of rice paper, I did five to seven. I let the bacon bake for around eight minutes. In the meantime, I got started on the eggs. This is hands down the best egg white replacement when it comes to fried sunny side up type eggs. In a medium to large mixing bowl, place some gluttonous rice flour and salt. The flour I got from the Asian supermarket. Next, you add soy cream, unsweetened soy yogurt, and some rice vinegar. Now for the egg yolks, I know I could have gone like all out and made my own egg yolk mixture, but I took a bit of a shortcut here using the tops of orange tomatoes. You could also use something that looks similar like um, Faisalis, Faisalis, although honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of how that tastes. <laughs> now, if you want to create your own egg yolk mixture, the timestamp is on the screen here. Bring a nonstick skillet with some oil to medium high. Add some of the egg white first. It takes about, I would say, a minute for the egg white to seize up fully. Quickly add the tomato tops as well. I served everything with the bread from the previous day. Also some tea, which is specifically mentioned in the scene also. And then what gives you that typical egg type flavor is of course black salt, which you're gonna sprinkle over the eggs just before eating. I'm really not used to these very savory types of breakfast foods. It made me think of this meme as well. <laughs> So the same method of layering rice paper, I use that again in the following recipe to make ham. In the movie Ponyo, we're following this little humanoid sea creature. The story is based on the little mermaid. So Ponyo really wants to become human as well. Loving ham is one of her defining personality traits. I'm first cutting the rice paper into these sort of heart shaped pieces. Then I'm preheating the oven, lining a sheet with parchment, and then soaking each piece of rice paper for a few seconds, brushing it with a barbecue mix, and then adding another layer of rice paper and doing that again. Yeah, I, I did four to six layers per ham piece. Whole wheat sandwich bread, butternut lettuce, and some sliced cheese. I'm also putting together a little sandwich sauce by combining ketchup, vegan mayonnaise, and mustard. And that's it. I never ate a lot of meat as a kid, but I was obsessed with this specific sliced ham. This stuff tastes exactly like it. Even the consistency and the look, it's almost the exact same. It's scary. Honestly, I think I think Ponyo would approve. The food scene that Ponyo is most known for though is this one. It's ham! Careful, it's hot. 
I thought this would make for a good excuse to attempt the impossible, which is creating vegan boiled eggs. I took to a few different food blogs for inspiration here. Definitely check them out. I will link them down below. This time I made the egg white out of soft plain tofu. Then I added vegan cream, black salt, aga aga, and a little bit of water. Blending everything in a high-speed blender until smooth. Then I transferred this to a non-stick saucepan, brought the heat up to high, and using a spatula, I kept stirring as I was waiting for this to come up to a boil. Now once it starts boiling, you give it another 30 seconds to a minute. Keep stirring very thoroughly, and then you scoop the hot mix into some silicon egg molds, which I'm sure all of you have. Oh my god, someone please try this recipe using silicon ice cube trays. Smooth out the egg white tops and then let them sit for at least 30 minutes. In the meantime, put together the egg yolk mix inside a small pot. First add nutritional yeast, cornstarch, black salt, regular salt, and give that a quick mix. Then pour in some vegetable oil and mix that until smooth. The heat is still turned off, by the way. Now you add some yellow or orange food coloring, plus some hot water. And then, um, yeah, you once again mix. Bring the heat up to high, whisking continuously as this comes up to a boil. And then you're left with beautiful neon custard. As a last step, you add either some dried potato flakes or, in my case, some instant mashed potato mix, which happen to be vegan. I feel like the tofu mix is a bit too gray or beige looking. White food coloring does exist, so if I ever revisit this recipe, I would maybe add a few drops of that. Now on to assembling the noodles. We gotta crunch up at least one of the packages. Next, add the seasoning that the noodles came with, followed by some hot water. Put on the lids, let those sit for three minutes. And then add your toppings, some more of the homemade ham, some spring onion, and the DIY egg, which you're also gonna sprinkle with some extra black salt. Confusion. Why does it taste like egg? <laughs> Next up is my neighbor Totoro. I have two young sisters who are both still really really young kids and they just remind me so much of me and Satsuki and so like I cannot watch Totoro without bawling my eyes out every single time. Food in Totoro showcases how important community family and appreciation for the simple things is. Um, or do you remember the scene where Satsuki prepares breakfast and bento boxes for the others? She also cooks what I assume to be vegetable miso soup. Okay, so first I cooked up some rice and in the meantime I got started on the soup. I chopped up some mushrooms here because we had those at home, plus some garlic and ginger. To some oil over medium heat, I added the garlic and ginger first, letting both cook over medium for about two to three minutes. Then I dumped in the mushrooms, gave that another six-ish minutes. I definitely improvised here with what I could find in the kitchen, so I added some mirin, some teriyaki sauce, some vegetable broth, and a whole bunch of random spices. I brought this up to a boil and then I let the soup simmer over medium high for a few minutes. In the meantime, I cut up some pak choy. And then I mixed in the miso paste, quickly lowering the heat to medium low. Taste tested this, added in the pak choy, letting the greens cook until wilted for another two to three minutes. Okay, cool. Now onto putting together 
my version of Satsuki's lunchbox, which is definitely a bit different. I, ha I have to make some changes. First, it's the same though. Then this little red ball. It's a pickled Japanese plum called umeboshi, which is supposed to be really, really good for digestion. They're insanely salty and sour though. And so you really just eat them in tiny amounts together with the rice. Now, instead of the fish, I added some miniature corn. You know, corn does have its moment in the film. So I think that's a good replacement. <laughs> Lastly, she adds edamame and pink fish powder, which I substituted with pink baking glitter. <laughs> yeah, my bowl ended up being quite random, but paired with the soup, this was really yummy actually. Aside from the plum, maybe. That one, that one is intense. Last but not least, Spirited Away. Food shows up constantly in Spirited Away. According to Wikipedia, to spirit away means to remove without anyone's noticing, but in Japanese folklore, spiriting away refers to the mysterious disappearance or death of a person after they had angered the gods. <laughs> This always looked so good to me as a kid. I don't think I really knew what it was. To a large mixing bowl, we're adding some hot, almost boiling water, plus some room temperature milk, some powdered sugar, vegetable oil, rice vinegar, and then you give it a quick mix and sprinkle over some dry active yeast. Set that aside to do its thing for five to 10 minutes. In the meantime, combine the dry ingredients, so flour and salt. I went all out and got the like low in gluten bao type flour from the Asian supermarket, but regular all purpose works just as well. Add that to the wet ingredients and you know the drill, mix it with a wooden spoon till it comes together and then get your hands in there and knead everything for a good six minutes or so. If necessary, oil your hands a bit. And then you put that back into the bowl, grab your proofing plastic bag from earlier and set that aside somewhere warm for one hour. The filling is going to be Atsuki bean filling. I could have made it myself, but again, I felt like taking a bit of a shortcut. Um, so we're going with some finely pureed sweet red bean paste. And I added some orange zest to that. Just because it tastes really yummy together, you could also do some lemon zest or lime zest. It's really good. Now the dough should have grown in size quite a bit. You're gonna cut it into three equally sized pieces. Now on my first attempt, I made the mistake of cutting it in half and both of the buns turned out to be way too big for my tiny bamboo steamer. I feel like it's not baked so entirely and I'm a little scared. I think it's just a bit too much dough for this tiny steamer. So the second time around, I made sure to cut the dough into three and also to use a different type of steamer. If you have a bigger bamboo steamer, then go for that. Now it's time to fill the piece of dough. Flatten each disc and add one to two tablespoons of the red bean mix, kind of spreading that out Tuck the edges inward, pinching everything together. Let one bun at a time steam for about 25 minutes. Since I am not using bamboo, I don't have the space to let multiple steam at the same time. You'd have to set up multiple steamers 
simultaneously. You can also steam them one after the other though, or you could bake them in the oven, which that works, but then you won't have the same amazingly fluffy dumpling type of bun experience, you know? But yeah, these are so good. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like one of the best things I've ever consumed, I have to be honest. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making it to the end. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite Studio Ghibli film and why. Also, which one makes you cry the most? Let me know. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. I'm fighting, saying forever, he's shifty and super clever and told me I'm at the center. But I talked to the king of kings, he been pulling the strings, the music is for whoever.